Hi, I'm Juliet from Spoil Rotten Beads, and today I'm going to show you how to bezel a Luna Soft cabochon to create beautiful pendants, rings, brooches, and lots, lots more. A few weeks ago, Jo was doing one of our videos and she was wearing this gorgeous ring here and a few of you commented on the ring because it is really pretty and asked us how to make it so that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Before I start, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what you can do with these lovely Lunasoft cabochons. So the, the cab that we're going to be using today is a 17mm one here. And that's the same size that I've used for all of the items on my bead mat here. So you'll see the, um, once you've bezeled it, you can turn it into anything from a ring, like the one that I'm wearing today, to a brooch, just by stitching a brooch back onto the back. You can um, bead a really elaborate ring, like the one that I've got on, or you can just stop after you've bezeled it and just pop it onto the ring back just as it is because they're really effective but as soon as you start adding the beads around these they just start to glow and the color really pops out I haven't got one here but you can also use them as a pendant as well so once you've done something like this there's no reason why you can't pop that on a little bale and make it into a pendant so to bezel the all Luna soft cab you're going to need four different kinds of beads you're going to need size 11 seed beads and that's what I've got here. I've got two different colors. I've chosen two different colors because it will make it easier on the video to, for you to see what I'm doing, but you can just use one color, but I've got two here because that will make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. I then got some size 15 seed beads and then my Lunasoft cab here, I'm going to, I'm going to I'm, once I've bezeled it, I'm going to embellish it with some of these Miyuki drop beads here. And then you'll need a ring base with a flat pad You'll need some fire line thread here, and I'm going to be using the smoke color in the six pound size. You'll need some size 10 beading needles, and you'll need some zap gel if you're going to glue your back onto your cabochon when you're finished. Alternatively, you can carry on stitching and you can actually stitch them onto the back just simply by closing that gap up as you go by adding more and more beads. But I'll talk to you about that later on. So I'm ready to get started now. So I've threaded my needle up with around about two to three meters um, of my fire line thread. I say two to three meters because the longer length that you can work with, the better. But if you can, if, if you find three meters is too unwieldy, then just work with two meters and you'll be fine. You can always join thread on later on if you want to. So I've threaded up my needle. First thing I'm gonna do is take first color of my size 11 seed beads here, and I'm gonna count 44 beads on. It's really important to get this right at the beginning to count your 44. So I'm going to count my 44 and then I'm going to come back to you when I've double triple checked that I have actually got 44 on my needle here because you do need to have the correct amount. So I'll come back to you in a moment. So I have threaded 44 of my size 11 seed beads on and I have double checked that to make sure that I've got the right amount. And this end here is the end with my needle on. So what I'm gonna do now is take my needle and go back through all 44 of those beads. You probably won't be able to do it in one pass. So I'm just gonna pop it, won't make it easier for myself here. Go back through all 44 of those beads. There we go. So I'm going to pull this around now. And you'll see in just a moment, it will form a nice neat circle. There we go. So I went through back through all 44 of my beads, pulled it all tight and that's formed a circle. And now I've got these two ends. This is the one with my needle on it. So I'm going to take the end without my needle on and I'm just going to tie a knot there to secure that circle. And then I'm going to tie a double knot on top of that. Don't want any more than a double knot because otherwise a knot will be too big for you to start going back through when you start POTing the um, bezel there. So I've pulled that nice and tight there 
got that lovely neat circle and I'm now going to go through a couple of my beads here to pull that knot that I've just done into the beads just to keep make sure it's hidden and to keep it nice and secure. Okay, and now I'm ready to start peyoteing. So what I'm gonna do now is take my next color. So I'm doing this in two colors to make it easy for you to see. I've picked up my next color of size 11 seed beads here. I'm going to thread that all the way down and I'm gonna miss out, so I'm coming out of this bead here, I'm gonna miss out this bead and I'm gonna go through the next bead in the circle. So I'm missing, coming out of a bead picking up a bead, missing a bead and going through the next one. And as I pull this tight, you'll see what will happen is that sits there nice and neatly between those two beads. And so I'm coming out of this bead, I'm gonna pick up another bead, miss out the next bead in the circle and go through that next bead there. This is called peyoteing. Peyote. So this is a basic peyote bezel that we're going to be making here. So again, I've come out of this bead, pick up another size 11, miss out the next bead in the circle and go through the next bead. And I'm going to continue this all the way around the circle and I'm going to come back to you in a moment when I have done that. So I've gone all the way around my circle there with my second colour of size 11s and I'm ready to get go on to the next row. So to go on to the next row, what you need to do is step up through the next size 11 seed bead in that second row. So that's the first bead that I put on in that row. I'm stepping up through, it's called stepping up in beadwork, and I'm stepping up through that bead. And so now my thread is coming out between these two beads here and I'm ready to add my next row. And again, I'm gonna use another color now just to make this easier for you. I'm going back to the original color here. So I'm picking up a bead and missing out the next bead in the, um, in the beadwork here, which is this color, this one here, and going through that bead, that bead that's sticking out there. And it's easier with this right now, from now on because you can see that the beads are like a little zipper. And so you just know that the next thing you're gonna do is pick up a bead, sorry, pick up a bead, miss out that bead and go through the next bead there. And the beads are sort of sticking up really just to kind of, they show you where you need to go. So again, I'm gonna go all the way around the circle, adding a bead in between each of that second row of peyote. And I'm gonna be pulling this tight. And when you're bezeling, it's quite important to keep your thread tension nice and tight because that's what, it's the bezel that's going to grip that Lunasoft cabochon in place. So you can see that as I'm going, I'm pulling my threads nice and tight to keep my thread tension tight. And I'm gonna come back to you in a moment when I've gone all the way around the circle here. So I'm nearly at the end now, and as I'm going, I've been pulling it nice and tight, and you'll see when I take my hand away in a moment that it's beginning to sort of cup and and form a little wall really around the in that in that shape. It's sort of it's it's standing up now. So that's because I'm keeping my thread tension nice and tight. So it is important to do that. So I'll just get through to the end there. couple more beads to go. Okay, so this is the last bead in this row here. So I'm going to go through that dark pink thick bead there. Pulling it nice and tight. And I'm, you see it's really sort of beginning to cup and you can see how that's going to start to grip that Luna Soft cabochon in place. So I'm ready to step up now to the next row. So I'm going through the first bead that I added in that last row to step up there. So I've stepped up and I'm ready to add my next row of beads. And I'm gonna be using that um, lovely dark pink again. So I'm gonna pick up one of those dark pink beads and go through one of the 
he's in the last row there. And I'm gonna go all the way around the circle again, and I shall come back to you in just a moment when I've done that. So I'm nearly at the end now. I've just got my last few beads to add in this row, and I have been pulling it nice and tight as I've been going, so you can see how it really is starting to form that bezel that we're gonna need. I'll put my last bead on, go through that bead in the lower row there before I step up through the first bead in this row. Just go on beading nice and tight so it's getting harder to get in between my beads now. Nearly there. There we go. So I think that one. And let's get my tail of thread out of the way. There we go. And I can now step up through the first bead in that last row there. So now I'm ready to act to start um, finishing off that bezel by adding my Luna Soft cabochon into it and I can really start to tighten off that bezel now. So there's my Luna Soft cabochon. I'm going to pop that into that bezel there, popping it face down. And what I'm going to do now, stepped up, I'm going to do another round of peyote, but this time I'm going to use little size 15 seed beads. So I've gone down a size now, and that's going to help to bring it all together. And if you look at the back of this piece here, you'll see how I've gone from size 11 delica bead there to a size 15, and that's what starts to close that bezel up. So I've picked up a size 15 bead, I'm going through the next bead in that row there and I'm just going to keep my cabochon pushed down into that bale, bezel all the way as I go and I'm just going to add on this row of 15s now. I'll come back to you when I've added this row of 15s on. So I've gone all the way around, I've just got my last bead on here so I'm going to go through that size 11 and step up through that first size 15 in the row there and pull it all tight. And I'm just gonna get my fingers out of the way and let you have a look at it. And you'll see it's looking a little bit skew whiff at the moment. Um, that's absolutely normal at this stage. As you put your next row on, as long as you keep it all tight and keep that Luna Soft cabochon centered, you'll find it will all start to tighten up. So I'm gonna do another row of the size 15s now. So I picked up a size 15 bead and I'm gonna go through that size 15 bead in that first row of size 15s there. And I'm gonna go all the way around again and I'm just gonna be keeping it pulled really tight at this stage and keeping that Luna, making sure that that Luna Soft cabochon is pushed into that bale all the time as I go. And it will start to tighten up now and grip it in place. And you'll be able to move it around a little bit in order to center it if you need to. So I'm gonna continue doing that. I'm gonna do a few more rows and then I'm gonna let you have a look, look at how it's, how it's looking. So I'll keep the video running whilst I do that. So I've added my second row of size 15s and now you can see that it really is gripping that cabochon in place. So just to make sure that's nice and secure, I'm gonna add one more row of size 15. So I've stepped up, I'm gonna pick up a size 15, go through the next one and I'm gonna come back to you when I've added that final third row of size 15s on the back of my cabochon there. So I've done my third row of size 15 beads there and you can see how it's gripped my Luna Soft cabochon beautifully now. It's a really nice secure bale. So I'm now ready to um, start embellishing my cab to make it um, all sort of pretty around here and add a little extra bits on. But before I do that, I'll just tell you a little bit about what you can do at this stage as well. Because I'm doing my cabochon so that I can just glue my back my base on my ring base onto the back there but what you can do if you want to is just 
bead, keep beading and bead your base on. So if I wanted to do that, if I didn't want to glue this base on, I could put the base in now and then just continue adding rows and rows of peyote, ever so slightly getting smaller as I go towards the center. And to get smaller, you just want to miss out, skip a, skip a bead every once in a while, just to pull it in nice and tight. And you can actually just fix your ring base on just by peyoteing, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to glue this on a bit later on. So I'm going to start. I'm going to show you how to um, start um, start embellishing this now. So I'm coming out of one of my size 15s at the back here, and what I'm going to do is work my needle all the way through so that I come out on the top here between one of these size 11s. So you just need to um, find a path through all of your beads there. So I'm just going to go start going through rows until I get to the front. And if you're finding it a bit tricky with a size 10 beading needle, you can, if you want to, always switch down to a, a smaller beading needle to a size, um, say a size 12 beading needle, which you'll find will get through those rows of beads a little bit easier. So I'm going to continue going through now. Nearly there. There we are, my needle is poking out there through that um, top bead in that last, well, first row, very first row there. I'm just going to pull that all the way through. There we go. So I'm now coming out of one of the beads here on the top of my cap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this off by putting another a row of size 15s in between. So I've picked up a size 15 bead and I am coming out of that one there. So I'm going to go through the next size 11 in the row there. I've beaded this so nice and tight, I'm having difficulty going through it now. So I'm not happy about that. I think that it's gonna be a bit tight. So what I'm gonna do is switch down to a size 12 beading needles, a little bit thinner. So I'll come back to you when I've got a smaller beading needle on. So I've switched down now to a thinner beading needle. A size, this is a size 12 beading needle that I'm using and these are a little bit thinner than the size 10 and if you're going through really tight spots like I am now it can be really worthwhile switching down because if you try and force a beading needle through that's too large you can do the most frustrating thing in the world which is to actually split your beads and there is nothing more annoying than breaking a bead when you're at this stage in your bead work so I'm going to continue now adding a row of size 15s on the top of my on the top of my bezel here and you'll see it'll start to look really pretty as I go there so I'm going to come back to you when I've added all of those size 15s so I've added my row of size 15s on the top of my cabochon there. And now I am going to start to use these lovely Miyuki drops here to embellish the sides. So what I'm going to do is take my needle and go back down, sew back down through the size 11s so that I'm coming out of the side of my cabochon there. And I'm going to go back down until I get to this first dark pink layer here and pop out of one of those. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up a size 11 seed bead, a drop and another size 11 seed bead. Take that down there and I'm going to miss out the next dark pink in that row and sew through the second dark pink. So I've mi missed out the first bead I've come through in that row and gone through the next one and pull that tight and you'll see that sits really neatly there and I'm going to continue all the way around so I'm picking up a size 11, a uh, drop and another size 11, missing out the next dark pink in that row and going through the next one. There we go, and I'm going to continue all the way around my ring. I shall come back to you in a moment once I've got to the other, all the way around the ring, once I've got all the way back to the middle, beginning there. 
So I've gone all the way around my cab now and I'm going to fill in these gaps by adding another drop bead in between all of these. So I'm coming out of one of these last size 11s that I added when I added the drop bead on and I'm going to pick up just a drop bead and go through the next size 11 that's with the next drop bead there and pop out through the size 11 then. I'll pull this tight and let you have a look and you can see how that's now filling all of these gaps in. It's going to be like a little daisy. So I'm going through the drop, the size 11, drop bead, size 11. Um, yeah, through that size 11, picking up another drop bead, going through the drop bead, sorry, the size 11, drop bead, size 11. Pulling that tight and you can see how that's filling in those gaps now. So I'm going to go all the way around and come back to you when I've done that and show you how to finish off. So I've added my final row of little drop beads and I'm exiting out of one of the size 11s there in between the drops. And what I'm going to do is take my needle and work all the way through um, these rows here until I come out of one of these size 15s on the back here and then I'll be able to knot my thread around itself and finish off. So I'm just going to work my way through these rows here. Um, this is where it's really handy to have this smaller needle. Making sure I pull it tight so that those drop beads are nice and tight there. Nearly there. Okay. So I'm now between some of these little 15. So what I can do is take my needle down and out the back there and tie a half hitch knot. So I wait till I've got a little loop like that, and go through my loop and pull that tight and let that knot slide between two beads, like so. And I'll just tie one more. before I'm ready to snip off. Get my little loop, go through my loop and pull that half hitch knot tight there. Make sure that's nice and tight and I'm ready to snip my thread off now. So I'm gonna get my thread cutter, I'm gonna snip that thread off there. And I'm gonna snip the tail of thread that I left right at the very beginning off as well. And now all that remains is to glue my back on using my zap gel glue. So I'm going to put a nice splodge of zap gel glue on the back of my cabochon there. There we go. And then I can pop the ring base on and make sure it's centered and leave that to dry and it will be ready to wear in about 24 hours time. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it and do have fun making lots of different designs with your Lunasoft cabs because there is, once you've got that basic bezel, there is just so much you can do with them. So let us know what you think in the comments below and please come back and watch next time. Thanks.